you hear some people say how a good movie soundtrack is one you don't notice and I think that's right where you don't want a score distracting from the drama but I really think that imagine Lawrence of Arabia without hearing the main theme you know without noticing it you know, I think that having great musical highlights is fantastic and it makes it when you're watching the film multiple times you can really feel those those moments you're looking forward to the musical bits that highlight different points nature of the film really required a big orchestral soundtrack that could really pump it up and communicate a lot of the more subtle emotions of the characters because there's no dialogue. I was really lucky to find Christopher Gordon. Well, when Pete first came to me, um, he had a, a, a short uh, segment of the film. He talked about some of the music from Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think, and the great scores of Bernard Herrmann in particular. And so that's sort of stayed with us right through the whole thing. It was very clear. I think Pete had a very, very clear idea of what sort of music he wanted. He, you can certainly hear the influence of Bernard Herrmann in this score. Unlike any other project I've done, uh, there was effectively no dialogue, which meant the music had a, had a role to play where it's right out the front at times. It also meant that I didn't have to shape it around dialogue. The music could uh, speak in purely musical terms. We had Luke, who was doing the sound design. He did a premix of it that Christopher was able to listen to, and that meant that Christopher could build the score so it would stay out of the way of the sound effects, and the frequencies just don't clash like they might have. In some feature films, they're rushed at the end, and so they have to do the sound effects and the music simultaneously, and when they get put together, sometimes there's a bit of a fight. But what was fantastic in Wood 13 is we managed to avoid that. My process with, uh, with scoring picture is to, I have an assistant who, who goes through the entire score and actually logs every event that happens in the film. Um, every time a, a door is slammed or a cane is hit or whatever, and what frame number, what time code that happens in. That's put into a program and it's the only place where I actually use a computer in the entire process. That computer then calculates for me, if I go at such and such a speed, uh, what frame will I land at on um, beat three of bar 52, for example? I can then work out at what sort of tempo I want to go at and do some calculations to make things land. And then I bring it into the manuscript by placing all the beats on the top line here and then marking each event, each uh, hit, each bit of dialogue underneath it. So here, for example, at bar 10 on beat one, Ben begins to get up and just before beat two, we cut to the surgeon and on beat three, Ben is standing. So I know exactly where everything is happening. And then I start to sketch in my various musical ideas. And then from the sketch, I have to go to the full score. I orchestrate it out for the entire orchestra. You can see down the side here, in the woodwind, the brass, percussion, and the strings down here. And this is only about four bars of music, so it's just a couple of seconds worth. By the end of Ward 13, that, that would go by very, very quickly. One of the very special things about Ward 13 was that we were able to have a full-size orchestra, which is not all that common in short films, and that enabled me to have all sorts of colour. Forgetting the first few notes, uh, the beginning of the film is, is all just strings. This is made up of a series of minor triads with an extra dissonant note thrown in so that you get this effect. But when it gets into the operating machine with uh, all those weird gadgets, we hear, if you like, a prototype of Ben's first theme. Um, it's also a set of minor chords, but this time without the extra note. And that set of triads gets used in various ways throughout the movie. For example, when the nurse with the, the hockey mask appears, uh, you hear those same chords, but this time pumped out by the brass. So later on, I've added a, a melody over the top. It's, um, I hope, quite heroic. With that whole sequence where they're uh, flying around the, the stairs and, and everything is all done with just the, the woodwinds and the brass. Pretty much the entire score comes from those 
two sets of minor chords basically, which is what gives a certain tragic, horrific uh, quality to it. It's not until the surgeon appears that the various cane fights and the wheelchair chase happens that we have the entire full orchestra. There is a sort of a shape of gradually uh, increasing the momentum throughout the film. When you remember the music from a film, then it, it gives the whole film another layer in your memory. So what was great hearing Christopher Gordon's score for the first time was that all the twists and turns in the movie, the music took those turns as well and just enhanced and brought out the slightly less obvious things and just really heightened the whole movie in this incredible way that was better than I'd imagined, which was fantastic.